the course objective of course is that course deals with basic theory of analog already second year analog circuit course must have been done so nothing great will happen from there basic things can't change however from there how do you design a chip that is the course is trying to but unfortunately the word design itself says that it has to be it is not available that's why you have to design that means you don't know the specification a priori so when you are given a spec how to meet those specs will require lot of understanding of devices as well as circuits because then only you can actually meet those difficult specs and therefore design requires some understanding of basics of both devices as well as circuit devices to a smaller extent but circuit to a greater extent so this course will try to give some idea of good design principles and to simplify the design process itself okay uh, this is course content available in the uh, site itself however there are some you know a to d and d to a some parts were written because that was old course design in which there was mixed signal circuit was part of this course but now a new course is running mixed signal itself so we are removed that part so we have little more time to do uh, earlier things better okay so basically we will talk about mos models why analog models are different from digital models or how bad or how good they are uh we we'll look into spice models so all of you should be aware of spice i will not teach my so we'll talk about uh, gain stages both with nmos and cmos we'll talk about cascade and the word cascode as the word goes there we'll show you uh we'll talk about basically references voltage and current we'll talk about uh, differential amplifier which is our bread and butter and we'll talk based on that opam design we we'll look into frequency synthesizer dco based or pls we we'll look into little bit this year on interconnects because this is becoming a very tough situation in 2010 or 11 i had we we'll look into some testing layout issues and also show you in the current context this word low power or actually the low voltage low power is written specifically because the misconception among designers is that low power circuits are interesting are more interesting it's not actually it's the low energy the worry is on energy not so much on power okay power into time is in so energy is what is worrying us the battery stores certain amount of energy it doesn't store power okay so how fast that will consume okay so we look into it at the end what is this low power business the books which i use are not the only books which you should see hopefully yes but uh, i like this razavi's book by basic analog uh, integrated circuits most of my basic part will be actually taken from razavi's book okay which is a very standard all over the world uh, i have a edition 1 but i think now there may be edition 6 4 5 whatever it is by the latest one then there is this book gives as i say mostly on the analysis part very strongly then we'll talk about uh, something which is more practical which is a book written by baker lee boyes he is one of the pioneer researchers in the area of analog we'll also look into a very old book old in the sense it was available in my time so old that of course edition has changed the authors professor gray is still still paul gray is still there but the other mayer hers levis this keeps on changing mayer of course is older one but the i think this new ones which hers and levis have joined this is one of the oldest book on analog integrated circuits and paul gray was the chairman of uh, e department berkeley uc berkeley also then the president of berkeley he is still there of course is old 81 years so his book is one of the best uh, analytical book as far as the feedback theory goes okay so those who are interested to know more about feedback please carefully look into this the only problem is they are more from the old era so they are much more bipolar circuits though they added now mos in last 10 years 5 8 years but still their emphasis looks to be more on bipolar so i think that's the only reason why it's not so very popular my course itself says cmos so i cannot say bipolar so then there is a book by smile as well it's not available in the market 
the reason is that it is an old book in India hardly anyone knows about it okay. and I being the one know about it when I was in abroad so I purchased one and uh, many of the interesting research in the area of analog particularly low power or conveyor systems I think came from Ismail and Vice people. He is still with Ohio University, so you can go on his site and figure it out. Of course, some journals and some conference papers. There are other books are appearing in the market. Please, if you have, you know some book which is good, maybe you bring to my notice, I will also look at it. But course does not require, because what I cannot change amplifier whether two books, whatever they say, amplifier will remain the way it is. Okay. So do not worry, if you have one of them is okay. Okay, so basic analog design with CMOS and analog system. Uh, we will also see something about low power, low voltage. What is layout issue? Conclusion this is only some overview. So, wireless is the major driver for us. All VLSI designers are actually indebted to people like you who use mobiles, maybe two mobiles these days, iPad, iPod, whatever you talk and all the WiMAX, wi whatever uh, other hardware you create, this is the way money is available and that is why most of the chips or most of the companies except Intel for good, no good reason, they fixed themselves to microprocessors and I think another 30 or 50 years they may not leave that. Okay. But all other companies have some way or the other has shifted to wireless products. Qualcomm is number one, Broadcom is number two and lines of them. Even TI which was more signal processing have finally entered wireless world last 10 years. Okay. So everyone is looking into wireless. Okay. So that is the major requirement. Then there are systems which are specific optical system. People are now looking into changes from electrical signal to optical. It is not news quite some time but more results are now coming. So there are many systems which are optical systems which may require our effort at least to interface them. Okay. There is a effort going on on semiconductor 100 percent optical signal system. So there is no conversions, no losses. Okay. But the material they are using is semiconductor, mostly 3 5 materials but and partly silicon but everything on semiconductor. So a link has been created which is 100 percent semiconductor based optical system and no transition transductions. The other area right now is sensors and if you connect it to wireless then that new word wireless sensor networks you know, as if it is great. Sensors were known, networks were known, wireless was known. You combine you are in the world top 10 okay. that is what this. So yeah, right now people are working but sensors can be of any kind. Any, any energy to any energy is the sensing, you have to sense. Uh, there is also a catch with the what is the word uh, transducer and what is the word sensor, there is a lot of uh, fight goes on. Basically sensor should only sense, that is the word is. But most people believe sensors means a transducer with a conditioning circuitry or what you call amplifier signal, everything on chip or everything together is a sensor. This is the way they think, I am not saying correct or right. Okay. So there are many systems which are requiring sensors now based connection to circuits. So these are markets and of course Intel's high speed microprocessor, 4 gigahertz, if you give you say you need 6, you need 6, you say 10, why because that video game I want to kill that person faster okay, somehow. So that microprocessor speed somehow is the marker for everyone how fast. Okay. So the huge effort is on high speeds and of course to com match them then you need data transfers as fast as processor is asking. So you need look for high speed memories. Okay. So what is the difference between digital design and analog design? In digital design if you are I think you are done some digital circuit but the other course is running 671 VLSI design. So there we keep saying that look digital design is basically hierarchical that means I can have system break into smaller and if once I design great into smallest part I design back up, bottom up. So AND gate can convert to XOR, XOR can convert to large and we can go up to any system okay. 
So the idea in the digital system once designed you can read you do not have to redesign because AND gate does not change very much except for his driving that is current how much it needs or drives up. So these are more you know what you say custom, semi custom available you can reuse it but analog there is no such things. Every system you ask you have to design it. So it is called custom design something every customer requirement has to be met. Therefore, analog designs in general are custom designs and in general means people are now trying to make equivalent effort like can we make VHDL instead of this AHDL analog hard, high speed uh, hardware description language, can we do similar silicon compiler for analog. So, there is an effort going on to do replication of digital into analog but as of now most of the circuits are actually designed transistor wise component wise. That is the strength as well as the weakness. Strength in the sense for a teacher that is the best thing because now he sees transistor in digital you do not see transistor. A code lick dia ho gaya, comparator ho gaya, and ho gaya, XOR ho gaya, either to transistor dikhe. So, something you can see what is happening is analog okay. and therefore you can design oh if I change size, if I change mobility, I change VT, what will happen? Is my GM is higher? So, I am looking one to one what specs I am looking for that digital does not require because digital of course is the easiest designs. Okay, so, the point is that uh, it is a custom design and therefore very interesting because every design is required some way your so called man satisfies him his ego if he says yeah I understood it whether he understood or another issue but he feels very comfortable that yeah I am understood. That is why all these quasars, pulsars, the recent CERN experiment, what is great going on? If that graviton is not existing, you mean world would not have been there, world is still there. But now we are worried, is that kind of Higgs uh, boson is available? That makes fun for us, okay. Because then it says, oh, so statistics is something like this, it follows, but it, ha it is like that, but it has a mass, so it is not like a uh, fermion. So, this satisfaction that we understood is always with us and I wish IITNs do not leave this part in their careers or in IIT. Okay. Remain, do not become robots, remain humans. If you do not know few things is okay, but what you know you should know better. Okay. What you do is irrelevant, but how do you do is okay. So, what subjects you do in life, what you do is very irrelevant. Otherwise, all kinds of people would not have been there successful. But how do you do matters? So, work for the best of yours in whatever you do. That is what is important. That is human. And if you falter, more to learn. In analog circuit, uh, power and speed, like in digital, is also important. The word in the speed in analog is converted to word bandwidth okay, which is essentially in digital we call speeds. So, few queries questions are always asked why analog? So, in 1980 uh, many of the digital system designers they started saying analog is dead that is it end of it. But 2000 you see more and more papers more and more industries are entering analog. So, something has changed or something necessitated that analog design be relooked into. Okay. The reason probably is we are now trying to see harness more of natural resources or natural systems, we are trying to play with them, and nature essentially is everything in analog. That is why the question came whether Big Bang theory is okay or solid steady state theory is okay, because nature does not like bumps, okay. it always goes one after the other. Darwin's theory, okay. that is how we became human from all the other races. So, nature is analog. So, even if you process every signal digitally at the end, which is better in many cases, the front end will be always analog because signals will be analog. Okay. So, analog is a necessity because any DSP ahead will require digital data which it can receive converted from analog signal. So, that is one reason. Here is an example. I have an ADC and I have some input analog. If I convert it through ADC, 
maybe I will get the same num, uh, truth table for rate or be, be, data something like this which may be fed to DSP. The problem is that the signal here the strength of a signal or amplitude when you convert through ADC and if you have done ADC some time you know the there is something called INL DNL okay. So, it how much error it will create because if it does not cross the threshold it will not go to the next stage next state okay. So, it may remain in 0 it may not show you 1 where it was. So, it should cross so it is very unlikely that every time you will get a correct conversions okay because the analog natural signal may not be known to you and has actually known amplitudes. So, the best way is therefore amplify this analog signal amplify once you have amplified the signal you now are almost sure what are the levels and if you now convert and maybe other components some frequency components you can cut off from there other than the desired signal you put a filter pass through ADC and you get a digital data you are guaranteeing efficient way of converting an analog to digital. So, that is why you need an amplifier you need a filter before any DSP or ADC can be applied. So, that is why analog cannot be just brushed aside there are natural signals required digitization will require at least amplifier filter and an ADC. Now, further going ahead uh, there are sensors of all kinds mechanical MEMS which is very popular these days in our group optical thermal and they all energies are transduced into electrical signals because we are electrical people we can anyone can convert mechanical to optical and get away but we will not probably there because we will like to see something signal micro volt nano volt or some volts or some currents. Okay. However, most of the outputs of sensors when converted or otherwise without amplifiers will be very very weak and therefore has huge percentage of noise on that. Okay. So, obviously the noise part has to be removed. So, the all the analog system which we create must be low noise because otherwise they will pick up noise and add noise to it okay. and therefore the analog signal people must worry much more on the noise than what digital people work at. Now, it is also not correct, but this is what I say this is my statement digital data normally gets if you transmit very long unless you have a repeaters it gets distortion or called distractions ok. So, it is better if you have a trans receivers of analog kind because they will be faithful to your signals ok always how much additional hardware you require and how much money you may have to pay may be another issue. But analog transmissions will be take a cable home television you have a very good signal coming you see a beautiful videos ok. You actually connect a normal computer and put a TV in this you will see you know, it gives a good figure, but it, is a, it has a huge lines in between digital because the pixel to pixel it picks up ok. Now, this is essentially one says that analog signal processing is far better than digital signal. If you see a hardware hard, hard drive disk you know many times over the time because the magnetic in many cases the signal becomes very weak data is very weak. So, it becomes very difficult to know ones and zeros there and therefore, what you read may not be what you wrote ok. So, you need some amplification a priori before you read it out. Wireless for example, the antenna which your mobile has a very small antenna uh, which has very little directivity uh, that means it has very small antenna gains. So, the signal you receive is very weak. So, the first thing you have to do is amplify because otherwise that signal is less than few micro volts ok. So, your circuit cannot actually behave also. So, you need an amplifier right there after antenna ok. So, I am trying to convince you that why analog ok. Uh, microprocessor memories with ultra high speeds use clocks and signals gigahertz you are saying 4 gigahertz as system clocks are for intel new processors may be 6 gigahertz. Now, these kind of signals at such a high frequencies do not remain pulses ok. They actually get mashed up 
they look more like analog. What is the difference word analog means? Continuously time varying signals are called analog. Step signals are called digital, 0, 1 or maybe multi value switch. Whereas in analog, amplitude keeps varying or frequency keeps varying with time, okay. that is a continuous. Okay. So your clock if you see now, it is more like a continuous kind of this, there is no fixed wave, it is something like this, waves. So as much you may like, you are still doing analog signal processing <laughs> even in the high frequency domain. The interconnects which is the major worry right now in any single chip right now, okay. there are huge RC or RLC parasitics now, transmission line effects are very, very strong and if you are done your theory of EM waves which I wish you have, you will realize that transmission line theory treats you know the impedance match, the reflections, VSWR words which we use in there, they do now come into picture in our own circuits now. And these are basically analog signal processing. Okay. So what we are saying, even in a high frequency digital domain, you are doing analog signal processing anyway now. Okay. If you have a memory, if I hope you have done some course. In particularly SRAM or DRAM, you say there is a or any memory for that. There is a sense amplifier. The idea of sense amplifier is you don't have to see full voltage swing before output is given to you. So, it senses 1 or 0 faster. So, when you sense it, uh, it has a some kind of a uh, diffam going there which is an analog device. Okay. So, you look at systematically any digital hardware even now, you will find one way or the other you are directly or indirectly using analog processing. So, learning analog is not very bad, worthwhile. At least Qualcomm, Broadcom, Lot to Aapko Jao Vachche Dhenge. For example, you have a cable and you are inputting a signal V in and expecting an output V out. It is a good V in signal, good pulse is going, but what you see at the output if the cable is lossy, which it will be most cases, there is nothing called lossless cable. Low loss cables is possible, but there is nothing called lossless cable. So, if even if you are lossy, the output you are going to get is not digital. You can see what signal you are actually transmitting. So, essentially anything now you do at high frequency in particular, you are actually worried more of analog problems than digital. theory You must know in mind that is this course really relevant other than the job? which of course is I met him. Okay. So the question finally can come, why analog question for me is, is analog design more difficult than digital design? If you are asking me when I teach analog course, answer is yes. Okay. The reason is obvious, in a digital design, if you mostly it is inverter based or NAND or gate based. Uh, if you see the voltage levels which are allowed in digital, so let us say VDD and 0 are the uppermost and lowermost signal uh, levels, up to VT 0 can go and even up to half of VDD upper voltage can go, still it will be recognized and 1 and 0 is, is that correct. So there is a huge noise margin available, so signal is not reaching peaks or going, not going to 0 does not matter, 1, 0 are still recognizable. Okay. Of course, there are 4 corners, high speed CMOS, in case of CMOS, we may P slow, high, uh, N slow, P slow, P fast, high fast and other 4. As that margin is too big, if you fit inside that 4 corner, you are safe, everything will work. Okay. Essentially related to sizing as well as temperature. So, if you do that process and this together, if you fit within that, enough margin is available to you, ideally switch has VDD by 2 margin. Anything less than 1 and anything greater is 0. So, it is a fantastic system. So, you are not worried too much. Of course, there is a uh, trade off still goes on there. Their major worry is power connected with speed. Larger the power, 
larger will be, I mean it will be high speed. This is very obvious trivial in some case because in most circuits the current which you are using is to charge the capacitor. Larger the current C dV by dt is larger time will be smaller as straight as that. Okay. So faster means push current, okay. higher current, higher current means higher power. Okay. So it is very simple that power cannot be low as well as speed can be high. But that is what digital people want and that is what we keep doing that how to beat the system. Low power, high speed, how do you do it? That is the game. Okay. So how to fool a circuit to do that? Externally you feel that I have achieved it, internally things cannot be changed. Okay. But externally you still feel oh I have achieved low power and relatively high speed, okay. the games. Of course, you can have third parameter there area of the chip or area of the circuit you can, which can barter with that and can adjust to one of them. Whereas in analog it is not just bandwidth power, okay. it is power, frequency, gain, precision which we call drifts, supply voltage all of them actually affect the outputs. Okay. So now when I am designing something if I catch one the other may go haywire. If I catch two or three, the other three may not be within my hand. Okay. And therefore, design of an analog system really requires thinking. Okay. That is why I said that word thinking more essentially means, yeah, some people like thinking, so for them, analog design is simpler because that is what they want. But in general, people want to bypass thinking, then digitals are the best, analogs are not. There are more problems with analog as well. Analog circuits are extremely sensitive to noise and crosstalks. Crosstalk I suppose you little bit of aware if two lines are going together the signal on one line can interact with signal on the other okay. that is called crosstalk. The worst crosstalk occur if the signals are moving opposite direction. If they are in same direction lesser crosstalk, if they are in opposite direction it is x minus minus y, so x plus y kind of situation. So crosstalk is major worry in most of the circuits now, digital included or other digital is worse right now. Because you are putting too much of interconnect there, too many lines going on, particularly like DSP, it has a more lesser uh, circuit more interconnects. So now at such circuits you will find the problems are only on the crosstalks, so how to get rid of them. One method of course they suggest that put a ground line every between two, two signal lines, area, the paid price which we do even now. The noise, any line picks up you know like you put a wire, it picks up some voltage essentially is noise voltage, thermal if nothing else. Analog that noise is, there is no margin there, so any noise is also a signal. So if that goes it, it also gets amplified or whatever modification you do, noise also will get modified nothing can be done. In digital device second order effects, of course now they are also important in lower technologies but earlier we used to say that. They will not so much important because of huge noise margins available in the case of digital. Analog any variation threshold goes by less than 0.1 volt, current will be proportionally increased by that much square law. Now this means now suddenly you figure out small change there we did not carry here that has immediately GM has changed bandwidth change sometime it will not within what you want so the next stage may not work. Okay. So there are issues which only analog uh, has to ha tackle. So automation becomes therefore difficult I am not saying it is impossible but difficult because every case has to be handled. Even in layouts which are generally done by layout editors final before mast is made, most digital people just uh, you know go through a layout editors and generate patterns very fast. In analog even if you do once you will have to make 100 time intervention to, oh this may not work but okay try this now, okay. re-simulate again with a new one exactly. So there is game in analog layouts also, huge problems in analog layouts, we shall show you this part better. When the models which are good for digital are no good for analog, okay. 
we show you some of them. For example, there is a saturation parameter called lambda which show you in the current device. In the OPAM design case, it, the change in lambda is lambda to the power 4 in the this change. So, what you thought 5000 gain, you may get 5 or you may get 500 for 8 angular, okay, depends on which way lambda moves. Lambda change the R0s and if you make products, it will go to the lambda to the power 4. In digital, nothing called such lambda. We actually leave lambda here that lambda cannot be left. So, analog designer, therefore, in my opinion, is a very smart guy who uses his experience and to a great extent intuition. Okay. This is what humans are. We have intuition, that is why we differ from animals. If we have no intuitions, we will be as bad. Okay. So, when you use even the simulators, you have to have great experience, back knowledge and intuitions to design the newer system. So that is the difference between analog and digital. Now what is major worry for analog designers is this. Analog, independent analog chips are very few demand. Op-amps are made and made and they are sold. Only instrumentation people buy them. Very few such other systems buy op-amps per se independently. So I cannot have best of op-amp design like 8576, very low noise op-amp I can design. I can make, I can sell that also as a, on a board on a single chip on that. But a total mixed signal system, 80 percent of the part on that chip is digital or maybe more at times. So what, who will decide the technology? The digital people. The digital technology which we call smaller channel length technologies, nanometers, 11, you want to go 0 nanometer mass transistors now. So, you want to reduce, but surprisingly when we do analog design, we figure out that larger the length better for us. Now, here is the first conflict comes, okay. I want to work on 0.35 microns, they say work on 16 nanometers. Now, here is an issue, okay. So, the technology will be 16 nanometers and now I am told design your analog as good as what I am asking on this technology which is not good for you. So that is the biggest challenge analog people face. If you are left alone, maybe I will use bipolars which are the best analog components. Okay. But I will not be asked to do that. I say, okay, aapka itna area hai, isko best bana. Sab itna humko govern karo, how do we do? That is our major way. CMOS of course is the best bait for digital circuit and then whatever we do, analog has to be used, now has to be designed only on CMOS. It is not that I cannot design on any other technology or better or worse, by CMOS may be even better. But because 99 percent digital circuit, mixed signal circuits are digital based, I will have to work on all the time on CMOS because they work on CMOS. Okay. So there are issues which certainly are cropping up, not because analog is weak or something. You are given a bad tool and asked to design a very good system. That is where, and but that is the interesting part because it is not easy, it is not easily thinkable. So, you your best comes out, okay, I can beat the system. Okay. At least I reach what he is asking. So, finally, in the end, analog IC design is successful implementation of analog circuits and systems using ICs. So, their unique features are geometry is an important part of the design. This is most important, which is nothing in digital. But in analog, the geometry, the layout is the most crucial part of the design. Even sizing is very, very crucial. You create electrical design, from there you go to physical design and from there finally when the chip is made, you test the design. You have to create test vectors, so you have to test the So all the three parts as in digital, you will also have to do in the case of analog. As I said, they have to be implemented mostly for mixed signals and as I said, 20 percent analog, 80 percent digital and a chip. So, 80 percent majority, Ashkal to hai, majority governs democracy hai. Because of that, analog circuits have to be or analog design has to be on a transistor or a circuit level, more importance has to be given. There is a pass means after I design and I fab and I test, okay. Then I see what specs I wanted and what did I get. This is called one pass. Okay. 
most digital circuit with because of the experience and expertise available now across the world in one pass most circuit will come out at best two in worst designers if you are not a good designer that means who are not good digital designer that's what you should avoid in my class but that's what they industry is good who can copy best is the best digital designer kisi aur ka design maar sakte ho nothing better okay it has work work for you also okay. whereas in the case of analog it may require two passes it may require even three passes so cost is very high for that okay. so that's why i keep saying analog so what are the systems in mixed signal or analog we have in analog system which we have are amplifiers filters comparators oscillators or frequency synthesizers the new name multipliers pls phase lock loops voltage current references sample and hold circuits a to d and d to a converters high speed io interface this is another area where much of the work going on is high speed io and dc to dc converter now this word is very interesting it has been asked by me across iit faculty interviews for assistant professor due regards to them who didn't answer if i have 5 volts volt supply and i want 2 volt or 1 volt put a pot we have done in second year lab a resistor lagao divide karo दो वोल्ट मिले सो ये डीसी टू डीसी क्यों करते हैं डीसी से एसी जाओ एसी से डी का और तो वहां भी कंज्यूम हो ही रही नहीं कुछ और भी यू आर नॉट रॉन्ग दिस इज वन इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर सो इट्स डीसी टू डीसी कन्वर्टर एंड इट इज बिकम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इवन फॉर डिजिटल नाउ बिकॉज ऑन अ डिजिटल हार्डवेयर नाउ देर इज ए वॉट वी कॉल पावर सप्लाई यूनिट और पावर मैनेजमेंट यूनिट which essentially create variety of voltages for variety of blocks of the digital part okay so there that's a analog part okay that's why i keep saying analog is secondary lagta hai but usko hataoge to zero ho sakta hai okay we want to have analog design automation some of you can think over it we can have automated layouts we can have better simulation techniques than synopsis or cadence giving you for analog you want to create hardware description language similar to digital it possible and the best of course is you design and keep record of that which is called intellectual property probably you can reuse it you can sell ips itself don't make chips design ip test fab test and say okay this is doable so a opam from atmel you can actually buy an ip for an opam you don't have to design you find out from the specs which atmel number matches required okay you just ask pay hell of money for getting that but the effort of design is zero pay pay for it someone else does that you use it so there's another way of doing analog designs most indian and abroad companies actually work on ips okay. either they create ips or use ips okay so those who create ips IITN should join them because there is where the effort is, interesting effort is. If you look at the signal and information processing application for analog, almost every telecommunication, multimedia, automotive electronics, biomedical electronics, consumer electronics, neural networks, sensors, sensor networks, space and military applications or electronics. and of course in all digital and digital signal processing itself now you will require analog okay study there are two kinds of mixed signal which probably many of you are not aware most of the uh, teachers here are including me mixed signal means mostly digital part analog but there are other kinds of circuits available which are useful also particularly for newer applications of bio which are neural based okay there most of the core is analog and some inputs or outputs are digital okay so these are also mixed signals here analog is a major component okay so neural processors is one example we show you the figure and uh, we'll also show you some comparison of analog to digital this is a typical neural processor okay you can see from here this is your 
computer or say data from where you can create digital data. You can have a DSP, some kind of neural DSP processing, convert to analog. Then most of the processing is in neural analog. Then again convert to A to D for feedback to digital, so that the system is stable as well as to swing. So if you see it, uh, a digital part has a vector quantizer, some code book generators which come from PCs and through neural processors. Then there are a host of interfacing required, timing control, digital requires, so is analog requires. Okay. If you see the analog part particularly, it is a neural uh, processor requires some kind of vector quantizer again and it consists of synapses and matrix. If you have done a course on neural networks, you know about it, maybe I will show you as well. You may require summing of currents for neurons, you may require sample holds and you require encoders and WTA cells. Communication people know much about the word WTA, what is it? There is a famous song from 25 years ago, Abbas song, first song, winner takes it all. WTA. Of course, in bio it has another word, but in case of this, winner takes it all. WTA. So, it is a majority circuit which takes winner. Okay. So, these are the part of a neural processor which requires more analog processing than digital processing. This is the old slide of 98, so it is not very valid. The point we were trying to make then, why it is 98? Can you guess this word 98? In 1998, this course was written by me and first time taught in IIT or rather any IIT. Everyone copied and kept saying we have started, fair enough, all teachers do the same. We also took someone from Stanford or MIT and then we say we have done it. Other IIT is doing for me saying is equally good, okay. at least they have seen my course is good enough. So this was the time when, so this was the old slide, so I just wanted to show you. Okay. So from this you do not have to go, the idea is to show here is that everyone believes that the analog processing is costlier, it is not true. If you look at the million uh, connections updates per second or instruction calculation per second, analog is better than digital. Okay. So to some extent this idea should get out that digital systems are far superior to the analog systems. This is only my word for you because people have started believing that that is why digital is popular. No, digital is simple, cheaper, that is true. But otherwise, if you have larger processing, even this can match you as much. Okay. But with larger analog, there are more problems. So, it is not catching up, but by as far as theory goes, analog signal processing will be far better any day. You see the numbers, human brains require 210 to the power 9 million connection updates per second. We are still analog at least we are reaching 20,000, digital 4, 5. So we are no way reaching to the nature. Okay. Analog at least we are coming closer to the nature. Okay. To some extent analog is still very much relevant for funda people. This is taken from Ismail Fares. This is just to give you, I want to make a similar logic uh, design kind of thing for OPAM, this is my aim, no one has done it, no one has succeeded. You have a mixed signal concept, this is called top down design, bottom up implementation as we do in digital. You want to see can we do in analog, so this is the flow. From concept, you can create architecture, each architecture can be created to circuit blocks, each should have some evaluation blocks, feedback to each and from there to circuit maybe reevaluate and feedback to it. The flow which we follow in digital can we follow similar way in analog is ultimate for us. Okay. We are not, right now we do have hazard way, we design and say it is okay. okay. So if you look at the analog, here is a typical digital inverter on your left, P channel device, N channel, CMOS inverter, depending on the input low or high, P or N will be on or off correspond the output be 1 or 0. Okay. It is a very trivial inverter circuit which is digital. The V out may not be as VDD, V out high may not be VDD, V out low may not be 0, but possibly we want to make it and CMOS it comes very close to 1 and 0 as they are. 
Whereas if you look at analog, the basic circuit is an amplifier. Okay. Actually, this is also an amplifier. There is no difference. I'll show you the what is the difference. This is an amplifier, which has a resistor, which can be a transistor as well, and you have an N-channel driver. Please remember the word driver is used by us, which actually puts the input, receives input, and puts it the output. So it drives. In this case. One cannot say N channel is a driver because other signal signal is also connected to P. Whereas in this case, this transistor is a driver. In NMOS inverter, yes, there will be a driver transistor and a load as it is. This is like an NMOS inver uh, uh, inverter as well. So the what is the fun part in this is this: if I plot for an inverter or an amplifier, V out versus V in, you have done this. In many courses, okay. this is normally VDT. This is normally VDT. There are, of course, as I say, five regions, but at least three shown here. Anything V in less than somewhere here, V out remains high. Anything beyond, maybe sorry, VDT is here, not here, somewhere. Anything beyond certain value of V in, the uh, v in becomes VDD, this becomes 0. This is what normal inverter shows. And we normally do not worry about this part. The reason is we are only worried about these levels in digital 1 or 0. So, input goes 1, output should go 0, output input goes 0, output should go high. It transits, we do not care too much, we do, but not so much. If you see the gain here, dv0 by dv in is how much? 0, same way here. So this is 0 in these two regions. But what is here? dv0 by dv in, which is gain, which is negative value, is my gain. So if you are looking for an amplifier, obviously you cannot operate on this region and this region. You can only operate in very small region. And if you use a CMOS, you can see this will be even sharper like this. This is very interesting. That means dv0 by dv is very high in transitions. So analog circuit only work in this small input range. That is why small signals. Where digital can go from 0 to VDD. Okay. So gain part only comes in a very small inputs. Okay. So we are worried all the time about this region in the case of analog. Is that clear to you? So the transistor must be remain biased in this region to keep amplification. In digital you do not bias because you are not interested in gains anyway. Of course it does have influence on speed, margins. I am not trying to say digital does not get affected by that. In fact, depends on size, it may shift and it may reduce the you know, margins as well. But typically, digital we damn care because we are only interested in the two ends. Okay. Analog, we are only interested in between, okay, which is the gain function. So, one has to accept that the first difference between the two circuit is the input range. Otherwise, this can be used as an inverter, okay. This this whole as can be used as an inverter. So, as you can say, this is an inverter because it allows you to shift VDD to ground, whereas this will input is limited and the bias which is not shown here is exactly in that range in which gain is possible. Is that clear? Exactly that is the reason why analog is interesting. If you see comparisons, the digital circuits are highly non-linear. You have just seen the characters, very non-linear. Linear means dv0 by dv in, except at the edges, it is constant, okay. So linear, okay. Another second year student who have passed, y is equal to mx plus 3c is linear, but it is not a linear system, okay. So do not confuse between linear linearity and systems. Okay, so it is a highly non-linear, high noise immunity, 
immune to power supply variation because as I say margin is high, GDD upar 5 percent, who cares okay. and one bit at a time is the information transfers, so no worries. If you look at the analog, it is very linear, that is the gain, gain is required extremely sensitive to noise. Now you can see anything now on this will also get amplified. So any small signal also has a larger gain seen by it. So now apart from signal any noise also will come to you okay. Whereas in the case of digital don't care okay. So it is very sensitive to noise and therefore worry. Any power supply variation is also worrying because it will directly reduce the currents and therefore GMs and everything and carries more than one bit of information okay and therefore it is multi bit transmission. There are issues right now which uh, I worked many years ago and again at the uh, what is a solar cell center people are now looking into uh, for solar cell as well as uh, electronics. There is a problem of natural radiation falling on the circuit okay and particularly if you are a satellite based circuits intense radiation is there. So if you see the two comparison for radiation purpose, there is a huge threshold shifts, there is a mobility degradation and therefore speed varies, changes much more. There can be huge power consumption change okay, after, before and after irradiation and there is what we call single event upset due to alpha particle hits. Okay. If you look at analog, now this spelling you know analog GUE, this is British. Okay, so analog functions are affected by here only small amount, here everything is affected. So if you have an analog block, any op amp circuit sitting on in your satellite, it will fail faster, that is our worry. It changes operating point, changes bandwidth, changes gain, change offsets, change stability, what not. Okay. Then it also control over biasing voltages or current when possible allow some compensation of radiation effects. You can actually play with band gap references and feedback paths to compensate from which is not possible in the digital. So some advantage, some disadvantage. SEU, SEU is certainly not important issue. Okay, this figure is not clear, we will come back to it later. So basically what is analog circuit design has needs to consider? In case of analog, uh, positive and negative signals both are required because generally it is a VDD minus VDD dual rails. Biasing is very important just now I showed within the gain range only you can keep the device. So if you shift out there is no gain for you okay. Linearity is essential gain has to be constant so you are looking for that is why they are called linear circuits because they are constant gains. We want in general any circuit but analog more less prone to noise because otherwise noise will supersede everything. We want smaller change in parameters it is called drifts. The problem as I say is there are no standard sets available, blocks available we can use so we may have to either create our own and reuse it or design every time. Then very difficult right now is to design low voltage circuits and therefore low power circuits or maybe low energy circuits. There are three parameters which you shall work in analog design. These are our what you should say bread butter parameters. The transconductance GM output resistance R0 and the third and the most important input referred noise that is the three parameters important as far as the gain side is concerned outputs are concerned and finally for all analog circuit we are worried about bandwidths okay, which is our frequency response. So how do you tackle each of them and still do not lose on others is what the game is all about designs. Okay, so we stop here today, we will come back next time.